They've been called a national disgrace. The new figures showing a record number of almost 1.2 million emergency supplies being handed out at food banks in the past year. One of the biggest food bank providers says areas where the new benefit called universal credit has been introduced have seen double the rise, the rise of use of food banks than other areas. Universal credit replaces six other benefits, including income support and housing benefit. And there is a six week waiting period for the first payment. Our reporter Ashley John Baptiste has been to visit one food bank which has seen a rise in demand. Five years ago, it seemed nobody talked about food banks, but now an estimated half a million people use them every year. The Trussell Trust is the largest network of food banks across the UK. They have 425 member food banks like this one. Let's go inside. In the last seven years we've seen a dramatic rise in the number of people coming to feed banks. I think the first year we maybe had about a thousand beneficiaries. This past year it's well over 6,000 um, men, women and children who've received our food parcels. I started using a food bank because my other half got sacked unfairly from work and we were paying full rent and it took some time for the benefits to come through. So we had to come here because we also had bills to pay and it's only after you've paid for everything that you don't have enough for food. So I always make sure my son is fed, but sometimes there isn't enough for me. I survive on cups of coffee, sometimes for up to four days, just on cups of coffee. People are really struggling to make ends meet. Um, the benefit system is causing a massive problem from what we're hearing from clients, universal credit in particular. Most people have had to wait at least six weeks for their first payment to come through. Many have had to wait six, nine, sometimes even 12 weeks for that first payment to come through. The Trussell Trust claims in the 28 areas where it operates, where universal credit has been rolled out, they've seen a 16% increase in food bank referrals versus the national average of just 6%. It's hard, actually. It's hard for me and my volunteers. Um, sometimes, I mean, I won't, I won't lie, sometimes I go home and I can't stop thinking about people. I had a woman refer, refer to us um, not that long ago who was a, 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 had a newborn baby. There was a domestic violence incident and she was forced to leave the family home. Um, but she was rehoused in an empty flat and wasn't, wasn't able to access any of her previously owned furniture and goods. Um, and that woman was, and that baby too, cold, hungry. But you know, she's not the only one. We're, I see people every single a week in my feed bank. I don't want to tell my family I come here. I can't. I would feel so bad having to ask them for help. It's easier to get a voucher and come here. I'd be so embarrassed if they knew and worried about what they'd say. So hopefully this is only going to be a short-term solution. Also, a separate report out today says up to three million children risk going hungry during school holidays, with some existing pretty much only on a diet of crisps. That report is from a group of MPs who say the government needs to do more to feed hungry children when school canteens are shut. Let's talk now to Tracy Cullum. Tracy ended up having to go to a food bank after it took more than six weeks to receive payments. On the two separate occasions, she's had to apply for universal credit. Hi, Tracy. Thanks for coming on the programme. Hi, yeah, you're right. I'm very well, thank you. Also with us, we've got Lee Forrest. He works for a housing association in the northeast of England and he's seen increasing problems for its tenants caused by universal credit, with men, many ending up in rent arrears. Uh, Lee, hi. Hi, Victoria. And Alison Inglis Jones is with us. Alison is a trustee and volunteer with the Trussell Trust, who have released these figures today. That's Good right. morning. Good morning. Um, Tracy, yeah. you had to apply for universal credit after you lost your job last year at Greg's, where yeah. I think you'd worked for seven years. Yeah. Um, why did you end up having financial problems after you'd applied for universal credit then? Pardon, could you repeat that again, please? Why did you end up having financial problems when you'd applied for universal credit? When, uh, when I first applied for universal credit, um, I'd, it was in August last year, mm. and um, I uh, applied for it, and I had told us that I would have to wait uh, for, and me, proper, me main, proper payment I got off them wasn't until November. Right. Uh, because I had said that the wages that Greg's had given us uh, was to live on, but all what went in my bank account was 18 pence. Really? 
Yeah. So having to wait until you got the first payment of universal credit, what impact did that have on you? Eh, uh, I mean more. It, it, I'm I'm still in debt. I'm in debt up in my eyes. Um, I owe all my friends and family money. Um, you can't afford. There's. I've had to go and ask. The council had to sort us out a food bank parcel uh, last year, and they've had to do it again this year. Can and it's um, would I went uh, in the, my first payment last year was November, mm. but I had started. I had getting a temporary job, so I was working right until January, yeah. and then when I went back. Um, to tell them that the temporary job had finished uh, in January, they says I wasn't going to get a payment off them until April the 17th, and that was like just a couple of weeks ago. Understood. I can see that you're upset when you're talking about this, Tracy. Um, I, can you put into words what it's like for you being forced to go to a food bank? It's degrading. It's um, especially when you've worked all your life. Um, when you've worked all your life and uh, you, you go, you've got to, add, when people have got to come and tell you that they can sort you out a parcel and you, they take, sorry about this, because it's the most hard, you know, you know what it is, is I hate talking about this because I think it's the most degrading thing going and I need to, I need to let the nation know what it's like. Mm -hmm. There is no need for you to apologise, Tracy, at all. There really isn't. We are very, very grateful that you have come on our programme to talk about something which, you know, which I is... I mean, rent arrears, the, the freight and the tellers in the rent office, how much rent arrears I'm in. And, and now, because we're finally just getting me payment sorted, uh, they got the, me full rent um, on the 17th. Um, the, the, we've sorting it out where I've got to pay now every month £20 a month out of me, out of me money because I've like, had to wait for it coming to. Yeah. Tracy, I'm going to bring in Alison who's sitting alongside me in the studio and, and you can listen to her, Alison English Jones, who is from the Trussell Tr Trust, who have released these figures today about um, the number of emergency supplies in the last year. First of all, your your response to what Tracy yes. has told us this morning. Th this, this is not, uh, I'm really sorry, it's just, Tracy, it's just not an unusual story. I'm a volunteer in Hammersmith and Fulham Food Bank. You had Daphne on a few minutes ago as the chief executive there. Absolutely, we're seeing people coming, coming in in very emotional, fragile emotional and mentally fragile states as well mm -hmm. because they are in debt uh, and this six week plus waiting gap um, is creating huge problems for people across the country. Why is it six weeks? Do you no. We don't know exactly why it's six weeks, but what we are doing is having conversations with the Department of Work and Pensions to see if we can narrow that gap. That's what we'd like to advise, because we've seen from Tracy's story that it, this simply isn't working for a whole range of people. What can we do to narrow that gap? It's a question that we would have liked to ask uh, a representative from the Department of Work and Pensions too. Obviously, uh, we requested an interview. They gave us a statement which was the reasons for food bank use are complex, so it's misleading to link them to any one issue. And they go on to say that uh, the rollout of universal credit is helping people stay in jobs. Employment is the best route out of poverty, say the government, and there are now record numbers of people in work. Universal credit people are moving into work fast and staying in work longer than under the old system. Uh, let me bring in Lee. Lee Forrest, hello. You're a debt advisor for a housing association in the northeast of England. Got 24,000 homes. Of your tenants, around 400 are on universal credit. What That's impact right. is applying for universal credit having on those tenants? It's having a huge impact, and I can throw some light on why people are having to wait six weeks um, for a payment. Universal credit, unlike housing benefit, is a monthly um, benefit. So when you apply, there's a month to wait until. The, um, the money you've been entitled to during that month is assessed and then you've got to wait another month until you get your first payment. So that delay is built into every single claim and some people have to wait seven weeks um, for a payment. So, so that's immediately impacting people's ability to pay um, their rent, um, to buy food, 
to um, to make sure there's enough energy um, on meters and bills are paid and so on and so forth. So it's having a huge impact and okay. tracing okay. stories, unfortunately, typical of, of, of many of right. our clients. And so if you were if you were the Work and Pension Secretary, Lee, could you sort this? Could you make it a much shorter time before the first payment came in? I can see no reason why um, it needs to be paid in arrears. Um, I don't know why somebody can't apply for universal credit and then you get an advance on your first payment. Yeah. Perhaps that maybe can be paid back once you move into work. Um, it's an administrative um, necessity, I think, as part of the universal credit system, which presumably could be fixed to yeah. make it easier for people. Uh, Alison, is, is there logic to you about the way it's run at the moment that you, you don't get it in advance, you get it monthly after you've claimed? I can see why well, I can see why they may be doing that, but it, the, the problem is is that it's causing people the to, to the impact, and it's not just the impact, immediate impact on people. It's the fragility of people's states. It will tip into other things as well. So then, pressure on the national health service, the pressure on other services is is, is well, it, it will only increase um, as people have to wait for this period of time. And we've seen Tracy today. This this is it's not acceptable. Tracy, do you think that's a good idea from Lee, that you get the first payment in advance and then once you move into work, which is what you're trying to do, you've got temporary work at Christmas, then you, yeah. pay, you pay it back that way from your wages? Yeah, we, uh, that's, uh, that's what I had said to Fraser when Fraser had done me a documentary because it says that they, you can get this, say, they give you like a crisis loan thing, but they take it out of your money every month. Instead of like, if you've got a job, then pay back, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, Alison, regarding the DWP statement, universal credit people, sorry, this is their phrase, universal credit people are moving into work fast and staying in work longer than under the old, faster and staying in work longer than un, under the old system. Mm -hmm. Is that true? There's no doubt that people who come into food banks, I've seen, I would say 95, 98% of the people I see want to get back into work and people are getting back into work. But the problem is, is that people have run into debt mm. while waiting for that period. Well, and that is the problem. Mm. If we can, we are talking to the Department of Work and Pensions, the Secretary of State has opened his doors. The more we can address this together, the better it will be. Yeah. Um, Tracy, there are some really lovely messages from people who've been watching you around the country and I'm going to read a couple to you if I may. Okay. Um, Riley says you've worked all your life um, and it's degrading to, for you to go to a food bank and it's brave that you are talking about this. Um, this tweet from Chris says I hope every Conservative MP will be made to watch this and answer the questions raised on your programme today because this is shameful treatment of our people. Uh, again, Angela says, Tracy's worked all her life and now is getting no help. Rodney, I don't believe food banks should be needed, but I understand why they are. It makes me mad when you have people that don't need them who abuse them. A couple I know, this is not for you, Tracy, I'll put this to Alison. Yeah. A couple I know don't have kids at home, both smoke, go out three times a week, walk past with packs of beers for home, but yet use food banks. Everyone who comes to a Trust of Trust food bank has to be referred by social services, a vicar, a school governor. So we're not standing in judgment in any way at all, but least of all, people who are coming, someone else has made that judgment and they come in with a voucher and we feed them. We trust the 40,000 plus front bank, uh, for, you know, frontline care professionals yeah. who are referring. They have made that judgment and people are coming in, we feed. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm just going to read you this full DWP statement. The reasons for food bank use are complex, so it's misleading to link them to any one issue. As I mentioned earlier, employment is the best route out of poverty. There are now record numbers of people in work. Under universal credit, people are moving into work faster and staying in work longer than under the old system. Universal credit is designed to mirror the world of work and give people control over their own finances. The majority of universal credit claimants are confident in managing their money and we work closely with local authorities to support those who need extra help. Budgeting support, benefit advances and direct rent payments to landlords are available to those who need them. Lee, do you think people are aware of that though? What well, advance payments are the sort of help that's available to them? Direct rent um, payments to landlords, budgeting support, and benefit advances. 
Yeah, well, what, should, what should happen when somebody makes a claim for universal credit, they should be able to make the, um, the DWP aware of any vulnerabilities they have, so health problems, mental health problems, physical health problems that um, make it difficult for them to pay rent um, themselves, so they can have a, a managed payment to landlord um, decision made at that point. Yeah. Um, I don't know that that's happening um, as much as it should be, um, and that's why people are getting into um early in the process. And also um, advanced payments are discretionary. Um, and also, like Tracy said, people know that they have to pay them back. So often people are relying on um, friends and family and ultimately food banks to see them through the first uh, six weeks before the payment because they don't want to be in further debt um, when they're getting their subsequent universal credit awards. Understood. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Lee. Lee Forrest, who works for a housing association in the northeast of England. Uh, Tracy, thank you very much for coming on the programme. We Good really morning. appreciate it. Tracy Cullum, right. who uh, went to a food bank after it took more than six weeks to receive payments on the separate occasions, the two separate occasions she's had to apply for universal credit after she lost a job at Greg's last year. And Alison, thank you. Alison English-Jones from the Trussell Trust. Thank you.